Hi, Bill Mobley for the Brain Channel, again talking about Alzheimer's disease. I'm with Eric Seemers. Welcome, Eric. He is a distinguished medical fellow at Eli Lilly and Company. And Eric has taken a particularly powerful leadership role in Alzheimer's disease trials. Eric, welcome Thank you. to the program. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And then, if you will, give us a lay of the land of Alzheimer's disease clinical trials. Certainly. Um, well, I actually started my career as a faculty member at Indiana University and actually was a clinical trialist um, for the first 12 years that I spent there, built up what's called a movement disorder clinic, um, did a lot of clinical trials, and actually became more interested in clinical uh, trial design, uh, not only just the statistical powering, but also the, the overall design features. And it's, it's difficult to do that, actually, sometimes at a university. and so. Um, what I've done at Eli Lilly and Company uh, after joining in 1998 is really been able to explore how we design uh, clinical trials both in early phases and in late phases. I spent the first part of my career at Lilly in the early phase group. Many of those studies are actually intended to try to explore doses and one of the things that uh, we have done at Lilly, um, I, I think quite well, is to explore the use of biomarkers in terms of determining doses of, of investigational medications and what are the most appropriate doses to take forward. Um, now that's actually um, uh, accumulated in uh, my playing a major role in the design of these very large phase three trials. Um, one of the things that we're reporting is the results of a trial called Expedition 3. Now, Expedition 3, that design built on what we'd learned uh, in earlier trials with uh, that molecule, which is called solanezumab, but also even other molecules before that. Um, the Expedition 3 trial design is something that uh, some people I've heard are describing as the next generation trial design. And Expedition 3 was the first one to do that. Uh, so there are a couple things about that trial design that were unique and were actually built on our previous experiences. Uh, one thing that was unique is that we've moved earlier in the disease of Alzheimer's disease and so we specified that we just wanted people with, with mild dementia because mm -hmm. based on some earlier work, unfortunately, later stages of the disease probably aren't amenable to treatment with these amyloid related compounds. So we focused on mild disease. The other thing that we learned importantly, I think, in our earlier studies is that very good clinicians, if they make a clinical diagnosis of, of mild dementia due to Alzheimer's disease, actually about 25% of the time, these people don't have amyloid pathology and in fact are misdiagnosed. So the other important change that we made in the study design for this Expedition 3 trial is that we required people uh, to have amyloid pathology, and we can do that either using a PET scan or using spinal fluid analyses. Now that design actually has become, uh, I won't quite call it standard just yet, but has become the next generation. And actually most trials that um, are, are being started now um, focus on earlier stage patients, and virtually all of them now have this requirement for uh, uh, amyloid pathology. So what you did by designing the trial that way was you enriched the group of people in the trial for those who really had mild dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. So you increased the power of your study that way. Correct. And you, studied, and you started early because you knew that this particular treatment, this antibody, was more likely to work in an earlier population, in a population not yet severely affected by Alzheimer's disease. We think that's the case. That was that's, the whole that, anyway. That's a hypothesis, yeah. yes. And so um, we're actually also involved in a couple of public-private partnerships with the NIH, a study called A4 that looks at people who have no cognitive symptoms but have mm -hmm. amyloid pathology. So and, even earlier. So even earlier. Mm -hmm. And then the Diane study for people who have uh, these mutations that give them a 100% chance of getting the disease. Some of those people probably don't even have plaques yet. So again, earlier in the continuum of the disease. Now, one of the things you mentioned is that um, by requiring people to be amyloid positive, um, are they, does that give you increased power? And I think it makes our study a better study, but whether you're more likely to have a drug effect, mm. uh, maybe the jury's a little bit out on. I so see. 
Some of the results have shown that uh, in Expedition 3, there did appear to be uh, what we think is probably a small signal in these people who uh, we know are amyloid positive and they're mild. We also see in that study that people who were treated on placebo actually decline at quite a great rate. And so by defining people as being amyloid positive the way we did it, we may have actually picked up people with a more aggressive, virulent form of the disease. So we may need better target engagement when you define your patient population this way, but we think scientifically and medically that's the better way to do it. So in a way, when you, when you plan these clinical trials, you have to know about the science, you have to know about the biology of the disease. Ideally, you target populations that are most likely to show you a result given the drug that you're going to administer. And these are all, this is a multivariable problem, and it's your skill and the skill of folks who do work like yours to try to shoot right down the middle, to try to find that sweet spot where one can actually demonstrate efficacy. And that's where we're at. We're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to do that in Alzheimer's disease. And, and I guess we're now doing it in a number of different ways. So Expedition 3 is a very important trial. Uh, it'll be, uh, people will know about it very soon. Uh, give me your sense of Expedition 3. What did we learn and where do we go from Expedition 3? Well, again, I think in Expedition 3, um, I think in my view, I would say that there's a small drug effect there, small but, but, but present. Um, that will probably be debated. Uh, there may be people who think that that's just statistical noise, that there's no drug effect at all. That, I think, will play out in the scientific community over the next uh, weeks and months, uh, I would say. But in my view, we've learned from that. And so we do every step along the way, as you say, we're, we're testing not only the drug itself, but also what population are we in, what outcome measures are we using, mm -hmm. uh, what are our inclusion exclusion criteria. Um, but we do, I believe, uh, continue to learn. And even though we're very disappointed, disappointed for the patients, that um, the Expedition 3 study won't result in a regulatory submission for people with mild dementia, um, we do think that we've made significant progress with this study. The field will learn from it. It puts us one step closer to a medication that really will be, be able to slow the progression of this relentless disease. And surely that's a wonderful outcome. Uh, one step closer is exactly that, and, and goodness knows how complicated this disease is. One step closer sounds like a, sounds like a win to me. It's, it's not the big win, right. but it's movement, it's progress. What about the other targets in Alzheimer's disease? What other trials are coming on board? Well, we, uh, I can tell you about our Lilly portfolio, since that's yeah. what I know the most about. Um, uh, so base inhibitors are, are targets that um, are, are something that a, lot of, a number of different companies are looking at, including Lilly. We now have a compound in phase three. Um, so in other words, these base inhibitors decrease the, the synthesis of A-beta. So lanazumab, actually uh, was intended to increase the clearance of A-beta, so they get at the same thing in different mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, has become very um, interesting, I think, in the field are monoclonal antibodies that actually target the deposited plaque rather than the soluble A-beta floating around. So we have an antibody, uh, uh, N3PG we call it, that does that. Uh, Biogen has an antibody called aducanumab that does that. So going after the deposited plaque is certainly another very testable hypothesis and something that seems promising. The next generation after that may be treatments that actually attack the other part of the pathology in Alzheimer's disease, which is tau. Um, so we now have a monoclonal antibody that targets tau. Others are working along uh, the same lines. and so. Uh, one of the other concepts that is becoming more uh, uh, discussed is that it may be combination therapies that will ultimately be most uh, successful. So it may take an antibody uh, against tau with a base inhibitor or an antibody against plaque with uh, a tau antibody. Um, so the field is really in its infancy in terms of thinking about these combination therapy trials. And I guess as you go forward, or as we go forward as a community, the idea that <clears throat> targeting earlier uh, is going to be great for studies that prove that we can you know, reduce the rate of decline or even prevent Alzheimer's disease, 
but we, we still need to take care of those folks that have dementia. Yeah. So perhaps these combination therapies will fit in some logical way in the folks that are already having problems with their memory. Yeah, absolutely, that's correct. I think the, the um, conventional wisdom right now, it's not known to be the case, but it's a t testable hypothesis, is that moving early is better. Um, I think most of us also feel that the earlier you go, the safer these uh, treatments have to be. Um, yes. So there should be some balance between as early as you can get but needing a very safe drug, but you don't want to give up on people who do have symptoms. And if you do have symptoms, um, there may be a little bit more in terms of uh, tolerability issues that you're willing to put up with because you, you do in fact have symptoms and are declining. Very important work. Eric, thanks so much for being with us today and best wishes and we're all praying for all of the, for this community, the scientific community, the companies that work with the community, the caregivers, the patients, we're all, we're all hoping for a good result and very quickly. So uh, thanks again for being with us. Yeah, well thanks and I, I might just mention too, it's, it's a wonderful collaborative field. And so uh, whether it's people uh, at universities or also people in other pharma companies, we have people in other pharma companies who cheer for us and we cheer for them all the time. And so it's, it's, it's a great field as you know and uh, we're just all in this together to try and make some progress. Thanks very much. Bill Mobley for The Brain Channel.